oficial de Tema Music México, eh, Trampolín para Latinoamérica. Estamos muy emocionados. Y quisiera platicarles un poquito rápido qué trata esto. Eh, Steve Madden, nuestro diseñador, el creador de la marca, de sus inicios, desde que trabajaba en una bodega como almacenista, desde que vendía sus zapatos en una cajuela en Manhattan, desde ese entonces siempre ha estado presente la música, la música es parte de nuestro ADN y él creó su sueño y su sueño fue meterse a la música y crear una fusión entre la música y el diseño de zapatos y así es como nació en el 2008 Stima de Music, eh, esto fue una presentación de Katy Perry en Manhattan, hemos tenido muy mucho éxito en Estados Unidos con gente como los Grimes, como Iggy Azalea, como The Kills y obviamente la persona que van a, van a conocer ahorita. Eh, para nosotros es un placer tener esto en México, somos una marca que no cree en las fronteras y nada de esto hubiera sido posible si no eh, hubiera estado la persona que les voy a presentar ahorita, que es la persona que ayudó a a crear esto como consultor musical y que hoy por hoy dirige la plataforma de Estima Music. Por favor, de, denle un gran aplauso y por favor ayúdenme a recibirlo con, con el cariño que, que conocemos los mexicanos, al señor Steve Feinberg. Hello. Um, Uh, I just want to say hello to Steve Madden Music. Um, it's a project from Steve Madden the Man and Steve Madden the Brand. So I'm not exactly sure what Vlad said, but uh, it is very much about Steve's passion for music. Uh, I come from a year, a decade of music management, and I met up with Steve a couple years ago to uh, run Steve Madden Music. Um, We've had great success over the last five years. I think I just heard Vlad talking about the kills and grimes. Um, but the project has been amazing. So all of our shows are in New York. Um, at big venues, uh, actually some in small venues. And we've been fortunate enough to work with artists of all levels and at all points of their career. We do um, shows that are very private, uh, not open to the public. Uh, and no one has to pay. Part of Steve's love of the music is to bring the music to the people. And the idea was to bring artists that aren't necessarily in New York often and bring them to shows here so the fans don't have to pay. Uh, the venues are uh, work with us to put out invitations on a very private level, which is unique for most brands. And I don't know how Mexican uh, branding works necessarily. But in America, there's a lot of competition for that space in music. And Steve is a little different because it's very personal. Mm -hmm. So, and I think, as you'll hear hopefully from Elephant, that what makes the difference of Steve Madden music in the US and now in, in, in Mexico is that they care for the music and the artist. And I think uh, it shows. Hopefully tonight, if you're all there, you'll see the difference. Um, so now, I would like to introduce uh, someone I've had the pleasure of working with in the U.S. Actually, Vlad has come to the U.S. and we've seen the show together. Um, she's an amazing artist and a great performer, Elephant. Steve Madden, este proyecto que Steve Madden ha iniciado. No sé bien lo que dijo Vladimir, pero les puedo contar que yo he sido un manager musical, he tenido mucha pasión por la música y ya hemos tenido trabajo y mucho éxito durante cinco años con los grupos y los artistas, el talento, como por ejemplo Games, y también ha, ha tenido bastante éxito los shows en Nueva York donde han trabajado de manera privada, puesto que a Steve le gusta mucho el hecho de dar estas invitaciones y no cobrar, ha presentado en sedes tanto grandes como pequeñas. 
Um, so yeah, I am the pioneer. You are. Yeah, yes. uh, it's always lovely to be a pioneer <laughs> in anything. Uh, no, it's really, it's really lovely. I don't usually do in much of these kind of performances, or much of this kind of branding. Yeah. I did one in Brooklyn a year ago, and uh, the result of that was amazing. I had a great show with uh, a lot of people from the industry, but also a lot of fans and real pure love. And uh, the movie that was released afterwards and all these things was very genuine to me as a person. And I appreciate that very, very deeply. Um, even my mother was sharing that film. And my dad was sharing that film. Like, this is my daughter, look, look, look. You know, it was very much me, you know. And as an artist today, you can sometimes feel that you're getting, that you're almost like a prostitute or something. You know, that no one really, that the person that take, uh, hires you want to say what they want to say about you, but it felt with this uh, collaboration that I was really pictured the way I am. And I was, yeah, very happy about that. So I was super excited when I knew I took a look at to do this. Hopefully we do more all over the world. Yeah. Thank you. ¿Qué es lo que sientes tú al ser una pionera con Steve Madden? Me da mucho gusto, me encanta ser pionera, casi nunca hago ese tipo de presentaciones, pero en Brooklyn lo hice hace más de un año, fue un gran show con personas de la industria, con fans que me dieron amor puro, y con esta película que se realizó, eh, pude ver entonces que hasta mi madre estaba compartiendo este filme, muchas veces no nos reflejan como talentos, tal como somos, y me parece que este proyecto sí lo ha reflejado ha reflejado tal cual soy yo. Bien, por acá, you're welcome. Eh, para Jennifer, eh, eh, en la cinta vimos que tu mayor libertad es la música, que no hay fronteras para ti. Eh, en ese sentido, ¿cómo no traicionarse o dejarse traicionar por el negocio de la música sin que coste la libertad misma? Thank you, very good question. It's a very good, and it's actually the hardest thing. To be an artist 2017, you can sometimes feel that it's this little about the music, and this much about the looks, the clothes, the branding. So it's very hard actually to hold on to yourself in the music and uh, stay genuine to your vision. Um, I. I've been very lucky. I have amazing people around me that support my choices and uh, my sound. And uh, I decided early in this project that uh, I'm gonna be me in this project. And me is a changeable person, uh, like all of us. Every morning we wake up and nothing is the same as yesterday. And uh, I know that branding is a lot about consistency. But I'm challenging that. And uh, every time Elephant release something new, it's gonna be something new. And it's gonna make people confused and stressed out. But like I say, I have people around me that support my choices in this. And uh, I can just uh, consider myself very lucky. Muy bien, sí, es que como artista en estos años, en el 2017, es muy difícil, puesto que todo se va en la apariencia, en la ropa, en el branding, es difícil mantenerse genuino, pero he tenido bastante suerte y lo he podido hacer a través del apoyo que he recibido de las personas que están a mi alrededor y he decidido que yo voy a permanecer como soy yo. Yo soy una persona de cambio, igual que cualquiera. Todo va cambiando y siempre estoy desafiando con mi material. Amiga, ¿se puede agachar, por es nuevo, favor? Es verdaderamente innovador y aquí tengo una muy buena consistencia. Aún así, con el apoyo de las personas, puedo mantenerme en el cuento. Gracias. Hi, Ernesto Herrera de la película de Milenio. Continuando en este sentido, tú cantas desde una posición de mujer, no sé si reivindicas algo de feminismo, ¿hasta dónde quieres acudir la, cons la conciencia de, de tu audiencia? Um, I think I think what I represent a lot is a human being, you know. I stand strong for all women in this world and I and I think I don't have because 
of my natural persona and who I always been and I don't have to make any extra effort to sh to be a free woman because I am a free woman I come from Sweden and I come from Stockholm and I come from the South Island of Stockholm which is the most deliberated place in the world uh, the most free place for women to be in the world so I look I consider myself being 0.000.6 percent of this humanity that is actually a born a free woman with my free will and I don't have any pressure on myself or my family or from the, my community uh, to to do anything else than to be free and to express myself uh, for me it hasn't I haven't what, what I try to say is that I haven't made any big efforts I'm just trying to be very real I'm trying to yeah I'm just trying to be myself and also represent a free woman you know and a free man in this world like a human you know not uh, maybe my mission is not only to be woman woman power because I believe in the peace between man and woman not only that resistance, you know? So I think that's from where I come from. That's how I, how I look at it. Creo que yo estoy representando más que nada a los seres humanos. Por supuesto que yo apoyo con mucha fuerza y energía a las mujeres, pero de manera natural como persona yo no realizo ningún esfuerzo extra para sentirme y defender a las mujeres. Yo vengo de Suecia, de Estocolmo, del sur, y ahí es un sitio que brinda muchísima libertad a todas las mujeres, podría decirse que lo hace más allá que cualquier otro país alrededor del mundo, y yo más que nada me quiero reflejar como soy yo, y no nada más como una mujer, sino como un ser libre que puede expresarse a sí mismo, y lo que quiero decir con todo esto es que no he hecho ningún esfuerzo adicional para ser real para ser yo misma, para sentirme libre y yo creo que existe la paz y la buena relación entre los hombres y las mujeres, no nada más como mujer tengo esta misión, sino que se trata de expresarme como humano. Buenas tardes, Hola. Eh, si pudieras platicarnos un poquito acerca de qué es lo que esperas de este encuentro con el público mexicano y adelantarnos un poco de lo que preparaste para hoy en la noche y si los señores pudieran platicarnos también un poquito acerca de las expectativas que tienen de este nuevo concepto considerando hoy en día la industria como como está ok no, but I have prepared myself I have never had a show before in Mexico I have only been in Mexico uh, on the beaches in Tulum, uh, living my life, uh, you know, drinking beer and having a good time. So uh, I, it's been a beautiful, that was a beautiful experience. Now I'm back. Uh, I don't, like, my life is all about humans, you know? I don't look so much Mexican, uh, Swedish, uh, Australian. I look human, you know? And if, uh, for tonight, the preparations I did, uh, what I mostly did was to make sure that as many of my real fans from Mexico got into this show. I was sitting a lot to, to make sure that the people that have supported Elephant, some of them all, already from 2012, was welcome to this show. And that was my biggest uh, preparation. And, uh, yeah, because that is the most important thing for me, to meet those people. I look at that as uh, my Elephant Fund family, my my people that because my music is sometimes easy but also sometimes a little complicated i feel like if you love me i love you back i don't need to like figure it think so much i just if someone really appreciates me an elephant who i what i stand for and love my music then i am 99.99 uh, sure that i will love you too so it's all i just i'm here to get my first meeting with my mexican fans and uh, i'm so just super excited about it Nunca antes había estado yo en México dando un concierto, solamente había ido a las playas de Tulum, viviendo la vida, pasándola bien, tomando cerveza, fue una gran experiencia. Pero ahora que estoy de regreso aquí en México, puedo decirles que mi vida se trata de fijarme en las personas, en los humanos. Yo no veo nacionalidades, yo veo humanos. 
Y ahora que estamos hablando de la preparación, más que nada yo quiero asegurarme de que mis fans mexicanos estén en el espectáculo. Yo invertí tiempo para asegurarme de que ellos, con su apoyo desde el 2012, vengan a verme. Esa ha sido mi mayor preparación, más que nada poder conocerlos, puesto que ellos son mi familia, mi gente, mi música en ocasiones es fácil, en otras puede ser un poco complicada, pero si ellos me aman, yo les regreso a ese mismo amor, sobre todo si reconozco conocen al Elephant por lo que representa, por lo que es, por su música, así que con toda seguridad voy a pasarla muy bien con mis fans en México y voy a poder devolverles todo ese aprecio que ellos me han dado. Hi. Hi. Hey, Flor. From Glamour Magazine, uh, how do you get inspired to create new music, to keep you like, updated to the new kind of waves of music? And how do you think music and fashion are related? I think music and fashion is much more related than I would expect. Uh, music for me came into my life as a surprise. When I was 26 years old, I was uh, on a party in Paris and I ended up uh, me singing on an after party. And, I got, and you know, a month later I was in America. And you know, music for me has never been about looking for the new sound has never been about that. It's about uh, following the way, like that, the love that I get, catch that and trust that and follow with them. And now, after five years of Elephant, intensively working with Elephant, I, for the first time, said no to Tori. And I have worked on a new album now for 10 months. And uh, now, it's for, the, for, for me, my first moment of really sitting down and think, what do I want, what type of sound do I want to bring to the world? What do I feel like we are lacking right now uh, in the sound uh, on the commercial radio um, and also on the indie radio? Like, wh where can I put some extra pulse and blood, you know? So, uh, it's, uh, I don't follow it. I don't actually listen to music much at all. Uh, I, w I grew up in a crazy music family, so I had to say to my mom, turn the music off, turn the music off my whole life. Uh, so in a way, I think it's already in my system. I love everything from classical music to reggae music to rock and roll. So I'm never gonna put myself in a box. I feel like I was lucky because my, my career started with being picked up by Diplo and Skrillex. Uh, so and if those boys come and pick me up and love me, I'm gonna love them back. But I had no idea who they were or anything. Uh, they gave me my sound, big present. Uh, now I, for the first time, create something that I really think is from my perspective. But I still want to say that, yeah, it's not, yeah, it's not inspired from anything that particular. It's inspired from what what comes my way the people that comes my way and have the desire to work with Elephant. And uh, yeah, that's the biggest appreciation I have. Like with Elephant, the beautiful thing about it is that it gave me my first opportunity for collaboration with other people um, in general. Because yeah, because of my history with school, my history with uh, my life in general, I never had an opportunity to work together with people before. So for me, that's been the number one for Elephant the community, um, and, and who am I to say what is good and what is bad, you know? Who am I? I give, you know, I, that's up to you guys. But um, yeah, I'm trying to just keep myself uh, fresh, and at this point, because I'm getting older, you know, I'm 32 soon, and uh, I want to make music that I can send, stand when I'm 50 years old on stage and sing, you know? I want to make music that never gets old. That's my next goal for the next album, I guess. Thank you. Thank you. Sí, eh, yo estoy más que nada inspirada en la música, en la música, aunque yo veo que sí hay una relación entre la música y la moda, más de lo que podría yo llegar a notar. Yo tuve desde el principio la llegada de la música a los 26 años en una fiesta a la que acudí en París, de repente me encontré cantando para los que se quedaron hasta el final y un mes después ya me encontraba en Estados Unidos buscando mi sonido, pero más que nada yo sigo la onda del amor que recibo, yo tomo ese amor 
y lo voy siguiendo. Ya he tenido cinco años de trabajo muy intenso, no he tenido después de estos cinco años ninguna gira, puesto que he estado trabajando en mi nuevo álbum en estos últimos diez meses y más que nada puedo escuchar, aunque no escucho demasiada música, me puedo fijar en la música comercial, en la música indie, pero se trata de darle un extra pulso, un extra feeling, ponerle la sangre misma. Yo eh, tuve una familia muy musical, tenía que decirle a mi madre a cada rato, bájale a la música, bájale a la música, y por eso amo la música clásica, el rock, cualquier género, a mí no me gusta encasillarme, yo me siento muy, eh, muy afortunada, puesto que conté con la atención de Diplo y Skrillex, ellos me eligieron a mí y me dieron mi sonido lo cual fue un gran regalo y después yo le imprimí mi propia perspectiva, así que realmente se trata de que pueda ahora yo desarrollar una música que no envejezca yo ya estoy a punto de cumplir 32 años y ese es un objetivo que tengo, que mi música no vaya a envejecer jamás eh, welcome México, eh, Fernando Ángel Radio y MNI Entretenimiento México. Eh, me gustaría eh, que también eh, la marca, bueno, eh, la gente de esta imagen nos hablara sobre las estructuras musicales. Eh, crecimos escuchando a Cher, a Shanil Kondo. Me gustaría que nos hablaran sobre lo que ocurre musicalmente ahora. Eh, con, eh, por ejemplo, escuchar a, un, a una Kay Perry, Lady Gaga, qué es lo que hace diferente y a Elephant eh, de todas estas estructuras musicales que hay hoy en día. Gracias. Well, I, I just speak from my perspective for myself and for Steve Madden. Um, you know, we tend to work with artists that um, do speak their mind um, and do it their own way, much like Steve, the person does. So, you know, Steve considers his shoes very much like hit songs, and he talks about music. That's his vernacular, his speech is very much in terms of music. But as far as how the music business and branding and Steve Madden is concerned. I'd like to say, much like Elephant, I don't know exactly what other brands are doing, um, and I don't necessarily know exactly what people in the music business are doing. Steve and I actually have our own record label, um, and but we only work with artists that are doing it their way and on their timelines. So music has become very corporate. There's, there are a lot of brands involved, there's a lot of big money involved, and now that streaming has brought money back to music, it's become corporate again. We live, Steve and I live in a very indie music world, and um, so for us, the artists that we, use, uh, that we are um, booking for shows, and that we're trying to be in, let's say, business with, tend to be artists that are doing their own thing their own way, and uh, I think that's really important. I think it's important, you know, I've been listening to Elephant speak so far today, and it's amazing to hear someone say that I don't necessarily know what's going on, I just doing what I want to do. If you know anything about Steve Madden, the man, and the brand, that's how they do business. So for me, who comes from the music side of the brand, that's the, all one thought process. It's about doing things your own way and your own time. Esa fue una muy muy buena pregunta desde mi. I read that you have been traveling since you were 15 years old. That your one of your first trips of voyage was was to Thailand. And I got a question, a random, a random question about it. How does it influence 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 to your music? And also, does it has anything to do with your name, like with Elephant? Oh, sweet. No, so when I was um, seven years old, my mom moved to Thailand for one year. So we lived in Thailand, in a, and uh, I, I, my heart fell in love with, with Asia. I didn't go back until I was 16 years old to India, actually, and uh, fell in love. Like the, the smells, uh, everything came back to me, the freedom of my childhood. I'm very happy that my mom made that decision, even if school started, that I could be free for one more year as a child and really live out myself. Um, it's been everything 
uh, I never went to school and I never did all these other things in life that you should do to become uh, anything. <laughs> so for me the traveling was that. Traveling has been my uh, life school and life lesson and I think from traveling in witnessless, like I like to say witnessless, like no witness, I, I travel alone. I had the opportunity to uh, develop myself the way I wanted to, not the way people looked at me. Uh, like I never traveled with my friends, I never traveled with my boyfriends, I traveled alone. And that, uh, and you know, the, the meeting with other people become, you, you have so much more inside of yourself in the society, around friends and around family, you have a little prison. And if you go out of that, you can really find things in you that you have no idea, you know, that you have. Elephant. <laughs> If I'm going to be honest, I didn't know that this elephant thing was going to become this big, you know. Um, we had one song, it's called Techno Scene, and uh, I was with two boys, uh, we made that song. I thought we were going to be a band, uh, maybe, <laughs> or something. And uh, this uh, label sold this song to FIFA, and uh, we needed a name. Like instantly, they called up. They're like, "We need a name. We need, need a name now because we we saw the song." And I was like, "I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, cause I had no idea what I was doing." Yeah. And my friend said, "Just tell them elephant. Be elephant." And I was like, "Elephant? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Say elephant." So it was something that just happened over a phone call in a second. You know. Uh, so I had to grow into that name, I guess. Um, I feel like an elephant now, <laughs> but it was very weird in the beginning. But also from living with that name I realized that it stands for a lot of things that I do represent. You can be very, you can be very big and very strong, but still be very uh, sweet and uh, aware of other people's feelings. You can be very big, but still be very scared. Uh, you can be very strong but still very emotional. Uh, so for me, that's what represents. For me, that's what elephant represents for me. That I, yeah, that I try to be tough and I try to be strong and I try to be as big as I can, but still never leave my humble, my humble, you know, be humble to the world. And also, obviously, it is one of the coolest animals on earth. So yeah, obviously, it's it's great. Yeah, thank you. Bueno, yo empecé a hacer mis viajes desde muy pequeña, puesto que mi madre se mudó a Tailandia eh, y estuvimos ahí un año, me enamoré de Asia y luego a los 16 años tuve la oportunidad de viajar a India, mis sentidos se vieron muy, eh, muy al, al, flor, al flor, porque los olores, todo me gustaba, yo tenía la libertad como una niña y me encantó que mi madre haya tomado esta decisión, aunque haya sido nada más un año y me gusta desde entonces el hecho de que he podido vivir a, a mi manera, yo realmente no fui a la escuela a prepararme como solerían hacer cualquier persona, sino que más bien me dediqué a viajar sola, iba con amigos pero nunca iba con novio, por ejemplo, y me gustaba conocer a otros sitios, otros lugares y cuando te desprendes un poco de tu familia y de tu círculo de confort, entonces puedes tener descubrimientos todavía más trascendentes como en este proyecto de Elifan, yo no sabía que iba a llegar a ser algo tan grande, yo nada más me había reunido con otros dos músicos, habíamos hecho una canción y resulta que después de haberla grabado, FIFA se interesó en ella y entonces se vendió a esta, a esta organización y yo después vi que todo esto pasó tan rápido, fue algo como una especie de locura, pero tuve que pensar en un nombre de inmediato, puesto que nos lo estaban pidiendo para la promoción y entonces pensé en un elefante, porque un elefante puede tener características de animal muy grande, pero aún así conserva su dulzura, puede ser muy grande y aún así puede ser algo tímido, puede ser muy fuerte y aún así sentir emociones. Entonces yo más que nada trato de ser muy fuerte y muy grande y seguir creciendo, pero aún así conservar mi humildad y siempre darle eso a quienes me aceptan y me siguen. Uh, for Steve, uh, about Five Town Records label, can you tell us more? Please. Yes. Uh, 
Uh, yes, so Five Towns Records is um, Steve Madden, the man versus the brand. So Steve and I run Five Towns Records, which is where Steve is from, Five Towns on Long Island in New York. We're an independent label started last year. We have three artists uh, signed to the label. And we work, we're an independent label, privately owned, and our distribution is through Warner Brothers in the US, actually in the world. Um, our first artist, her name is Ezzy, E-Z-I. She has a record out now for about six weeks. And she's going on tour uh, in a little bit, but she's performing at some festivals for the summer. And uh, we'll have two new artists before the end of the year, out, which we'll announce shortly. Nuestra disquera, más que nada, está representada por todo lo que Steve Madden ha querido ya proyectar. Se llama Five Towns, como eh, también lo es su pueblo natal en Long Island, en Nueva York. Empezaron hace un año, ya han tenido a tres artistas que han contratado. Están como una distribuidora y una disquera de modo privado y la distribución la realizan a través de Warner Bros. en Estados Unidos y en el mundo y ahora pueden decir que han tenido como primer artista a Easy que ha tenido ya durante seis semanas un tour para presentarse en festivales de verano y vienen otros dos nuevos artistas que en su oportunidad anunciaré. Ok, aquí. Maybe a little bit for Steve, but more for the Do you consider a pair of shoes as an accessory? or an extension of your outfit. Are they, what importance do they have for a singer more than a beautiful girl like you? And we see a Swedish singer in pop and hip hop. How come? Uh, I think this is probably the first time I have high heels on in my life. <laughs> You're <laughs> no, but for me, for me, it's uh, shoes. Definitely, I look at it as an accessory. <laughs> I think it is an accessory for me. Yeah, uh, and it's also when you put a pair of high heels on like this, this is an accessory. If you put a pair of sneakers on, it's ne necessary. <laughs> no, but then it's uh, that. That's how I want to perform. That's how I want to live. That makes me very free as a woman to uh, be very. Uh, you know, to be able to move around like any man can, you know. The day when men starts wearing high heels a lot, again, uh, maybe I wear them more casually, uh, but uh, it is nice. Like I said, I'm a changeable personality. I feel, before I had very long hair and I felt very girly, so I tried to dress down and be like very street, you know, because it, you know, I'm a, it's all about balance for me. Now I'm a punk. So let's put the high heels on, you know. It's a, it's, yeah, it's a balanced thing. Uh, but shoes for me needs to be comfortable. To live in a pair of shoes, you, they need to be comfortable. Uh, yeah. Right, and, and um, it's interesting you asked that question because uh, Steve, um, in his history, what inspired him a great deal was actually men wearing high heels like David Bowie and a lot of the platform in the 70s and 80s was his inspiration, so that's kind of funny, but I think, you know, men and women have a very different relationship with shoes. Um, for, for me, I'm not gonna speak to it, I'm a music guy, I'm wearing sneakers, I guess they're Steve Madden. Um, but, you know, I, I personally, when, when we work with artists, we don't ask them to wear anything, we let them choose whatever they want. We have um, a lot of artists, it, it was the first pair of heels. Um, but, you know, Elephant, we did a show in New York, and I think you wore platform sneakers. Yeah, I have heels. It's whatever feels comfortable. And, you know, performers versus everyday life, you have to be able to move around. We have had performers in stiletto heels, and we've had them in sandals. So, for me, I think when someone, man or woman, feels comfortable in shoes, or, or actually, when they feel uncomfortable in shoes, you know the difference. Yeah. So, I think. If it's your personality, you do the best. 
Es la primera vez que estoy utilizando zapatos de tacón. Para mí los zapatos de, efectivamente sí son un accesorio y también si uso unos tenis no los veo como un accesorio, sino como una necesidad, puesto que esa es la forma en la que yo actúo y en la que vivo. Yo soy libre como una mujer y me gusta moverme por todas partes y, y partes igual que lo hacen los varones. Y en el momento en que ellos empiecen a utilizar tacones altos, yo también lo haré. Yo estuve ya con un look, una apariencia donde traía cabello largo y me veía mucho más femenina. Ahora se trata de un equilibrio que estoy llevando a cabo y tengo un look más punk y estoy utilizando zapatos de tacón. Pero más que nada se trata de tener un equilibrio y la comodidad resulta mucho, muy importante. Y en cuanto a la segunda respuesta, es chistoso que se mencione estos zapatos como algo, un tema del cual hablar, puesto que Steve en su historia nos ha contado que se ve muy inspirado por los zapatos de plataforma que se utilizaron en los 70s, 80s como con artistas de David Bowie y podemos ver que para hombres y mujeres hay una relación diferente en cuanto a zapatos se refiere, yo traigo zapatos tenis, por supuesto marca Steve Madden, puesto que soy una persona que se dedica a la música, pero a nuestros artistas no les sugerimos ni les decimos lo que se tengan que poner, ellos lo eligen y podemos entonces ver que si son zapatos de plataforma o son sandalias o cualquier modelo de zapatilla que ellos quieran, se trata de que puedan tener el movimiento requerido y cuando un zapato no es cómodo, por supuesto que se nota. Eh, bueno, hola, Pablo de las redes sociales de Estima de México. Eh, mi pregunta es para hablar en específico. Eh, con respecto a Stigma de Music, ¿cuál es el reto que tiene Stigma de México para con la música? Específicamente para este evento y para los que, para los que siguen. No hay retos, Pablo. Este, creo que más bien el reto era traer a esta mujer aquí y ya lo logramos. Este, somos una marca que le habla a, a la mujer fuerte, independiente, que no cree las fronteras y, y la música es prácticamente eh, lo que representa. Entonces, no creo que hagan unos retos, más bien es pasarla bien, es utilizar esto como trampolín y, y explotarlo hoy en México, mañana en Centroamérica, después en Sudamérica y esperemos que esto siga creciendo de la mano de mujeres tan tan poderosas y guapas como, como el infantil. Vamos por favor con la última pregunta. Other since day one in this uh, journey, and I feel like her and me have a very similar performance uh, idea, and uh, she inspires me a lot. Um, yeah, I've seen some amazing shows uh, these couple of years. Like Porter's Head was out of this world. Uh, I don't know. Like I don't have any real inspiration for my show because at this point it's just straight up. I have like a little backdrop, I have my DJ, a good friend with me, we bring in the energy, we bring you the songs. But in the future I would love to have more acoustic and uh, real instrument on stage and bring more of a, maybe more quality than quantity uh, of performance. Because uh, now I've been doing about 150 to 200 gigs a year for four years and uh, it's been you know, very simple touring. Just me, tour manager, sound engineer, DJ, traveling. Uh, in the future, I want to have a band. I want to have more. I really want to represent the, you know, genuine, organic, real uh, musicians of this world. 
because I'm not a musician myself at all. Like I'm just, a, I'm actually an artist. That's what I am. Like a creative person that fell into music. But I do appreciate musicians, and I feel that musicians have lost a little bit uh, spotlight in this new commercial space. I feel like I really want to bring in, you know, solos, guitar solos, and uh, you know, trumpets, and like, yeah, whatever, give it to me. Like that, that would be so amazing to be able to stand on stage, count uh, and uh, backed up by real musicians. Yes. Sobre la inspiración que yo he tenido para realizar mi música, más que nada yo podría decirles que los conciertos míos propios son los primeros en los que he estado. Yo he escuchado todo, desde la música antigua, les puedo mencionar a Courtney Love, también a la amiga con la que empecé a trabajar desde el día uno, seguramente ustedes han escuchado al respecto y estuvimos trabajando en muchos shows. Ahora también se me viene a la mente el, el, la banda Portis Head, que fueron algo fuera de este mundo. A mí más que nada me gusta trabajar en el futuro con música más acústica, dar más calidad que cantidad. Yo ya he estado trabajando 150, 200 toquines al año y ahora más que nada se trata de no nada más tener algo tan simple como podría ser mi tour manager, un DJ y el ingeniero de sonido, sino realmente ya trabajar con músicos de verdad, puesto que yo los respeto mucho y me parece que han perdido importante, yo no soy música como tal, yo soy un artista, soy una persona creativa que ha caído eh, afortunadamente en el mundo de la música y por eso ahora quiero darles el escenario a los músicos que hagan solos de guitarra, que se oigan las trompetas y que todo esto se vea realzado con la presencia de músicos reales y auténticos en el escenario. Muchas gracias, con eso vamos a dar fin. Pero antes de eso, uh, I'll say it in English. <laughs> uh, on behalf of the brand, on behalf of the Mexico, I want to thank you for being here. I think we're really excited for tonight. Um, I saw your show at Rock Trade in Brooklyn. I didn't know who you were. Uh, my first impression was, what the hell is this? I was like, really, really impressed. Uh, I'm a big fan now, and um, you have a song called, Where is Home? Well, welcome to Mexico. Thank you. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. Can, can I just say one thing? Uh, one thing, just, uh, that uh, one of the most important uh, uh, class of their inventions, inventions, inventions that ever was created for a human being that separates us a lot from the animals of this planet is actually shoes. Um, and actually, I just want to say that I hope that could maybe also inspire you, maybe for some something in the future, because shoes are so important for us to move around in this world. Like, you know, if you put a uh, barefoot in the jungle, it's not gonna work. Um, I know it's not working in the city either. I go a lot barefoot, and it's not working out. So, yeah. So in that way, it's there is something spiritual about this too. You know. Thank you very much. Gracias. We're going to have uh, some photos, maybe, for you. Quiero decir una última cosa, agradecerles, puesto que uno de los inventos más importantes y que distinguen a los humanos de los animales son los zapatos, y espero que eso también inspire a la marca Steve Madden, puesto que los zapatos son importantísimos para que nos desplacemos y hagamos lo que nosotros querramos. Por supuesto, descalzo no se vale ni en la ciudad ni en la selva. Muchas gracias a todos ustedes y nos vemos en la noche. This way, Alex, please.
Les damos las gracias a todos chicos por haber venido esta mañana. Les pido a Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.